Hi guys, this is Christina from Speak Better Feel Great TV, the place to boost your English and boost your career. And today I'm coming back with another very special interview and I'm very excited to have、uh, this guest today. His name is Fabian Snowart.、Uh, um, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly.、Um, but Fabian is, he, first of all, he speaks、uh, several different languages,、um, but Even, even more impressive than that is that he runs a website called bilangeanglais.com that he has been running since 2007. So that, that's nine years now, which is just absolutely impressive. And he's also the author of four books and several other products to learn English.、Um, and、uh, especially one that we're going to talk about. To help you to improve your pronunciation, it's a product called Click and Speak that he has created.、Um, and it's, it's, you know, I know a lot of you are interested in improving your pronunciation and improving your accent. Fabien is French,、uh, and as you'll hear, he's,、um, he's got this, this a wonderful accent.、Uh, he speaks very clearly, very articulately. Um, and he's done a lot of work and he's got a lot of good tools、uh, that can also to help you. And so I really wanted to, to share this with you and to help you learn、um, j- just to meet Fabian because he's a great person, but also to learn、uh, his tips about how he did it. Because, I mean, he was in the same position as you were a French person who went through the French school system to. More or less learn English, and, and you can look at where he is today. So, I hope that he will be a real inspiration to you, and I hope that you're going to enjoy this conversation. So, here we go. Okay, so Fabian, right now、um, you're in Hungary.、Um, what, are you, what are you doing there exactly? Right, so、um, the story behind it is that、uh, I went traveling around the world for,、uh, which was supposed to be one. Year a long time ago, yeah, and I ended up、uh, traveling for three years. Oh, right, wow! And、uh, I ended up meeting my future wife, okay, and、uh, okay. We, who's, who's not Hungarian, who's Russian actually, okay, right. But we had we just had to choose a country to live in, yeah. And、uh, Budapest is my favorite city in the, in the whole world, oh, yeah, okay. And、um, my wife liked it also, so we ended up settling here, yeah. And、uh, well, it's a beautiful city. I, I just, yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I just love you know, the architecture and,、uh, and it feels different. It's something more relaxed、oh, yeah, compared、okay. to Western Europe, I would say. Oh, yeah. And standards of living is pretty high and,、uh, and mm. it's cheaper also. Yeah. When you, ha- when you、uh, have your own business, it also, you know. What do you so, do? So I started with a website called、uh, bilingueanglais.com、right. uh, back in 2007.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, what、well, started, you know, it was just me in my bedroom and trying to、uh, share what I'd learned in English. Yeah, sure, yeah. And so over the years, my goal, my goal began to just、uh, give everything I could to, for people to learn English. So、mm-hmm. um, I mostly wrote books in the beginning, and、right. it's been a full time、uh, job. Okay. Well, I, I don't like the word job, but <laughs> work. Been, like, yeah, my full time work, my、yeah. full time activity since.、Uh, 2012. Okay, yeah, right, nice. And、uh, yeah, so these days I just spend my days writing a lot of、uh, material、mm. for people to learn English. That's、okay. what I do day to day. Yeah, right, right. And、um, you, because you're French, but obviously you speak very good English and you speak a lot of other languages too.、Um, like, which, which languages do you speak, in fact? So, my, na- my native language is French.、Uh, the first language, the first one language I learned、mm-hmm. uh, was English. Right.、Um, Uh, then I got to learn some Spanish in school. Yeah.、Uh, eventually, I got to learn、uh, Hungarian.、Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's a bit tricky to say that someone learned the language because you know, it would assume that that's, that's, it's over. You know, we learned the、right. language and we're done with it. Like it's finished. Yeah, I'm yeah, finished it's learning. Finished. It's never finished. Even one's native language, we always have, we're always learning new words、right. and expressions、exactly. or new, you know, new words appear. Yeah. And、uh, I speak some Russian too.、Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, yes, it's, it's、uh, four foreign languages. Okay, yeah, that's,、uh, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah.、Um, and how did, you, like, how did you manage to learn all of them? I mean, because for a lot of people, they're like, oh, just learning one language, that's so hard, and, it's, and I just can't do it.、Um, like, how did you succeed in learning a lot of different languages? 
So every language has a different story. Right. Uh, in, in, so English, uh, I learned English. Uh, I learned English grammar in school. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things we do uh, the wrong way uh, in the school system. Yeah, sure. Uh, but well, we can learn gra grammar in school for sure. Uh, this is kind of all we do actually, because mm. we neglect the rest. Right. But so I learned English grammar, you know, just going to school the usual way. Right. Yeah. Uh, then I got to learn a lot of vocabulary uh, through my uh, pastimes, really. So uh, when I was a teenager, I was way into computers. So I was just learning how to make a website, uh, how to use a program, and mm. most programs were in English yeah, and not in right, French, yeah. things like that. So it got me doing things in English. Yeah, uh, I would be and I would I would play a lot of video games. Also, it was not all uh, all work; it was probably more time spent playing video games. Playing video, yeah, but you know that really worked. I mean, I've had I've had clients. Uh, you know, and I mean, not, not, they're not necessarily very young clients, but that's what they say. No, I play video games on the computer and I've learned a lot of English. And they ask me all these questions about video game English. So what does this mean? And I think it's uh, if you're, you're having fun and you have to understand it to like accomplish your goal. If, I mean, it's, if it's to get to the next level or to save the princess or, or whatever. So, I mean, you, you learn, yeah. You do learn. You learn. You learn a ton. You just need to uh, play this with a bilingual dictionary by your side yeah. for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think what's really useful about them is you get to learn a lot of vocabulary uh, right. through, uh, visually. Yeah. So, uh, well, you, you, let's say you play a video game. Most video games you have to fight somewhere. So you're gonna learn a lot of words about uh, I don't know, <laughs> weapons and guns and right. things like that. So it's not really like you need those words, but at the same time. Uh, you're practicing your English anyway, yeah. And uh, I think adventure games are among the best games to practice your your English oh, yeah. uh, because uh, you have so much text and also so many visuals. Ah, right. And so basically, you, you're taking it easy. You're learning through uh, pictures, picking yeah. up objects, knowing the name of it just by clicking on it and things right. like that. Right. But at the same time, you have to go through a lot of dialogues. Yeah. And uh, so, so you're practicing your English and you're learning good grammar. Uh, back in the day, back when I was a kid, uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, which was a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, it, it, it's this. Um, yeah, I mean, you, sometimes you you learn without even realizing it, and and huh. yeah, like you said, even if it's not you know sword and dagger, are not the most everyday words, but at least you're keeping that contact with the language, and it can you know maybe push you to actually just continue and to find other resources and keep going. Uh, and yeah, no, no. I think it's I think it's a great way to learn languages because it's fun and you don't even think about learning, but you're doing it. And uh, eventually, uh, when I went to university, I uh, went to college right. uh, for a while. Um, so I, I had this placement test for English, mm -hmm. and uh, the result was I don't know five out of five, whatever the grading system was. Yeah. And uh, well, the funny thing that is the, the conclusion of. Uh, of the person handing out the test result was that right. I was bilingual, but I thought it was pretty funny because I had no idea how to pronounce the language. Oh, right, but you yeah. know, if, I, if testing on paper, supposedly I was bilingual. Yeah, right. But so the good thing that came out of it is that as it put me in a phonetics class mm -hmm, instead mm -hmm. of a traditional class. Right. Okay. And so I finally got to learn about the pronunciation of English, ah, yeah. and uh, that that was like a that was a turning point because before that, uh, okay, to give you a few examples. Mm -hmm. If I had to say the word uh, weird, right. I would say weird because, yeah. you know, you're French, you read it. You uh, read and we it, must yeah. read, we don't, we don't speak, we don't listen. So yeah. weird looks like it's pronounced weird. Yeah. Or uh, if something was great, I would say, hey, that's great. Yeah. Because, you know, it's E-A like an eagle. So exactly. those letters are the same, but not the pronunciation. It's not the same sound, right? No, no, Engl English spelling is, the I think, one of the... Uh, it's the biggest challenge. I it's think. it's one of the worst. That I yeah I don't I don't know who invented the spelling of English, but I like I always say this guy must have been you know like I imagine this drunk Englishman <laughs> stumbling out of a pub and saying let me write down the way that English should be spelled because it makes no sense. Um, but yeah right and yeah so so about uh, pronunciation and um, phonology and all of that like like your your accent is just absolutely fabulous. Um, and your pronunciation is very clear. And li like you said, it's something that's not taught in a lot of language classes. And I think a lot of French people, I mean, at least my clients, they always say, you know, I want 
to improve my accent, I want to improve my pronunciation. Like, what's your secret? Uh, the first thing to keep in mind is uh, that language is sound before anything else. Yeah. Exactly. So text only comes later. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Text is um, text is an extra. Yeah, right. And um, and with text alone, you have no idea how to pronounce the language. Right. Like uh, some languages are easier than others, like uh, Spanish, Spanish, for example. Spanish, yes. The spelling, you know. I think, I think German is. I think German is the same way. It, it's it's you know they have very long words, but if you look at it long enough, you can find the way it's pronounced. It's pretty. The sound and the the way it's written, they correspond right. generally. English, right. no, but uh, and, and that's what's missing in English and yeah. French. And we, we're not fully aware of it in French as mm. native speakers because, uh, well, you know, it's sort of a given. We didn't have to work hard on it. Mm. But for English, uh, we need to learn. Um, so, for, uh, let's say f people need to focus on sound first, right? Because it's the uh, the essence of the language. Yeah. And, um, well, after that, uh, well, so the challenge is that native speakers don't know how to spell usually mm -hmm. uh, ah, because, yeah. mm -hmm. because the spelling of English is challenging. Right. And yeah. non-native speakers and the opposite issues, they, they, can, they can read, but they don't know how to pronounce what they're reading. Right. Um, so whatever the language, people should start with phon phonetics. Start That's with the, the most, Yeah, we start yeah. with the sound of the language. Mm. So the, the key question here is... Um, the most important one, I guess, is uh, which sound exists in English right. but don't exist in French. Okay. Because as long as we don't know the answer to that question, right. uh, we're going to be uh, guessing instead of knowing what to do with, uh, with the language. Mm -hmm. And if we can't hear it, we can say it. And so if someone wants to improve the accent, first right. they should be able to hear properly. Yeah. And um, phonetics may seem like a, a bit of a challenging topic because it sounds a bit too scientific. Mm -hmm. And it seems very complicated, but really, it's, really, it's not pretty simple. You have uh, three things: intonation, right? Uh, stress, which yeah. is going to mean uh, word stress, which mm -hmm. word to stress in every sentence, right? And syllable stress, which syllable to stress in every sentence, mm -hmm. and uh, articulation, so how to pronounce each of the sounds, right? And um, I think French people in particular should uh, should focus on uh, stress because mm -hmm. we don't really have to stress word and syllable in French. No. And uh, so we usually kind of, uh, we sort of raise our voice at the end of every word or every sentence. Right. So if I was to say, um, for, for example, uh, développement en français. Yeah. But uh, in English, it's going to be the development. Exactly. So we need yeah. to stress the second syllable. And we need to keep that in mind. I'm still fixing so many words because I never learned that when I got started. Yeah. So. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I mean, I don't know... I, gen I mean, generally, when I work with clients on this, they're always like, oh, this is the first time I've ever yeah. worked on that. And, and I mean, they're, they're people, they're like, you know, 35 or 45 or 55 sometimes. It's, it's I think, yeah, I, I think you're right when you say that, you know, you should start with the sounds and not start with the words. And I think what happens in the school is, is quite the opposite. It's They start yeah. with the grammar and then the vocabulary. Like, they're just going about it. In, in the, the completely, exactly, yeah. the complete opposite of, of what would make more sense, I think. It, it makes no sense at all because yeah. uh, the challenge also is that there's a cost to it. So if you start mm. with grammar mm -hmm. uh, and, and especially focus on text a lot, you're going to have to imagine the pronunciation of English instead yeah. of knowing the pronunciation of English. Right. And then it takes years to, to get rid of those bad habits. Exactly. That's, uh, like... that's what's awful about it. Well, <laughs> all you have to fix it is start, you know. Start the right it. place. Yeah, exactly. That's that's all you have to do. Oh uh, yeah, no, it, yeah, it's it's such a simple solution, but uh, but I guess I guess people think of phonetics and phonology and pronunciation is like like you said, kind of scary and kind of you know I don't know too scientific or something. But but that but that um you know that brings me because you actually invented um this tool. It's called called Click and Speak to help people to improve their accent and to actually to learn to pronounce English correctly. Um, like, can you can you just tell us a little bit about what this click and speak is? Uh, sure. So, so it's um, it's a training and a tool that includes a lot of uh, different things. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, it's a way to learn the top five thousand words in uh, spoken American English. Okay. Yeah. Uh, said it uh, scientifically uh, and taught in the context of a sentence every time you know you, you don't want to learn words on their own you always want to learn them in the context in the of the sentence context, right, yeah. because this way it makes sense yeah and this way you know you're actually learning something you you can say you can use yeah 
because we don't speak just saying word, Christina. <laughs> uh, I speak, you know. It's yeah, like, right. Oh, it's just, uh, we need full sentences. Yeah. And it's a lot of content, uh, dozens of sentences to learn every day and a new dialogue every day. So right. uh, the, the dialogue part is a bit like a sitcom or a TV show. It's for okay. people to relax in the evening. Because uh, I think, uh, I really believe in the power of uh, just doing things you, you love doing in English. Right, yeah. Because this way you're going to stick with it and uh, you're going to put in the hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also a special repetition system for people okay. to uh, review um, well, so basically, uh, if you don't review, you're going to forget everything. Right, exactly. So you need some form of a review system. So sure. it's, one, it's one way to go about it. And uh, there's a grammar progression inside of it also. Okay, so, so there is a little bit. I like it. It's mostly focused on improving your pronunciation. But like you said, it's, it's not just words, individual words. I mean, it's in, in context and it's, you've got the grammar and everything that goes with it. It's it's the whole thing, uh, whole thing phonetics, yeah. vocabulary, grammar. All right, yeah, that's, that's awesome. And like, where did the idea come from? Uh, so, uh, so the story behind it is uh, back in 2011, mm -hmm. um, I started learning Hungarian. Right. Um, that was my first time abroad. I well, I'd been running the website bilingualenglais.com since 2007. Mm -hmm. I had uh, one book out, which was right. pretty popular. But I wanted to come. I just like to create new things. I wanted to to come up with something new. Yeah. And uh, so I was. I kept uh, wondering uh, what do people need to learn English? Right. And especially, I wanted a list of everything people need to learn English. Like so, if you were to start from scratch. What do you need? Like uh, mm -hmm. so, it was a bit of a challenging question. I read a lot about how the brain works, and at the same time, I was experimenting a lot on myself learning right. Hungarian. Yeah. And so my my question, my answer to the question, what do people need to to learn uh, any language, but especially English, was uh, right. first they need to learn how to get organized. Sure. Which is learning how to learn. Oftentimes, right. a lot of people think they they don't have a gift for languages. Exactly. Yeah. But it's and just you know if you, you I don't know it's sort of random. And it's um, if you don't know where to start, if you don't know what language is made of, and things mm -hmm. like that, you have a you have a different. I, I like uh, in, in Hungarian they have a, a word for uh, the feeling of languages. Okay. So just like you could have the, you know, you have different uh, senses, you know, right. vision, you know, sight, he hearing, and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing of uh, language is the feeling, and I think it's pretty accurate because oh, yeah. uh, some people have that feel for language, and others don't. Mm. And if you don't have it, you can actually uh, by reading about languages, which is what I did, it helped me a lot. Yeah, you get to approach things differently, and you know where to start and what to do. Yeah. So first thing is be organized, know how to learn, and then phonetics. You know what we talked about. Yeah, to focus on the sounds and, so on. and yeah, vocabulary and right. uh, grammar. Yeah, and yeah, right. Sort of going in that order. And I, I think you know when when you say that, I think um, like that. That's one of the. I guess I'm going to call it an excuse. Uh, the excuses that that I hear a lot is like, oh no, I'm I'm you know, and it's French people, and and so they're often saying, oh no, je suis pas doué pour les langues, or uh, yeah. you know, oh no, mais nous les Français on est nus dans les pour les langues. Um, but but I you know it's it's kind of like. You know, if you take a metaphor of like, let's say somebody who wants to build a house, like, like nobody is born with this gift <laughs> of construction. Um, you know, they have to learn the tools that they need and they have to learn the um, sort of the way to proceed to build the house in the correct order. Um, and then they learn to do it. And I think languages, it's the same thing. I think people think that they just should be able to pick up a book and automatically just uh. soak in the information and remember everything and when they can't they go oh no I'm just not good at languages um so yeah I know I think you're totally yeah, right I, about organized being organized is just the key yeah. it's, it's like a, a musical instrument mm. uh, it, okay so there's also this idea that people uh, uh, have you know sensual what, what's the name for it uh Sensorial preferences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like like they're more visual or more uh -huh. auditory or, yeah. But so let's say you want to learn a music instrument. Mm -hmm. And let's say you, uh, you're very good, you think you're very good with your eyes, you know, more, you're more visual. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to work. If you want to learn a musical instrument, you need to, to have, develop a sense of touch. Right. And uh, be good with your ear. And that's yeah. all you need, really. And then synchronize both and, you know, 
some form of you know, yeah work <laughs> with your muscle to some extent to connect the two yeah but that's all there is to it and languages are very similar yeah so like a good pronunciation is um, it's just about knowing what to do with your tongue mm -hmm. and uh, your mouth and uh, should you round your lips or not and yeah. uh, where the mouth should be and things like that, mm -hmm. where the tongue should be and yeah. a lot of things like that and that's all there is to it yeah it's I, I think yeah I think a lot of people when they're when they're doing pronunciation they also yeah they don't think about oh I need to focus on where do I position yeah. my mouth because I mean like, like the mouth it's, is your instrument basically. it's all about muscle exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly so you have to know how to use the instrument to make the sound <laughs> yes it's, and uh, yeah. anyone can learn that so there's no excuse exactly. for that exactly yeah and and yeah and and like speaking of excuses um uh I'm sure that you've encountered this as well like like the people who always say um, oh, I don't have time, or the only way to really learn a language is to go to a country. Um, you know, I mean, you've you've traveled to lots of different places, but I don't think you've ever lived in, like, uh, an English-speaking country. I don't know, have you? Uh, I've traveled in English-speaking countries, but I've never lived there, yeah. Right. Uh, so I learned all my English in France, mm -hmm. and um, so every language is different. Yeah. For English, I learned everything in France. And then I got to uh, I got a job thanks to it. I right. got to travel thanks to it, and eventually uh, I, I went for a trip around the world. Also, probably because I felt confident enough to uh, you know if if you, if, if you only speak French, it's right. kind of, you know you don't feel like traveling just anywhere. You know, stick to English speaking countries yeah. or things like that. But um, so yeah, I spent uh, three months in the U.S. on a, on a road trip, the right. U.S. and Canada. Okay. Uh, three months in New Zealand and Australia, but I was traveling all the time. So, mm -hmm. so I actually didn't learn much English. I enjoyed my time in those countries, right. but I didn't learn much English. Though. Right? Yeah. And and so, like, if you know, for I guess for that person who's always saying, "No, I have to go live in England for a year to learn." I mean, what what advice or what tips would you give to this person who's just so frustrated because they can't? pack up and go travel the world for a year and they can't go to England for, you know, a five-week immersion program. I mean, what would you say to that poor, that poor person? Uh, well, uh, first of all, traveling is cheaper than people think. Mm -hmm. so, so keep that in mind if you want to make plans for the future and would like to see the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's really not that expensive if you do things right. I mean, for one month's rent, uh, I don't know, in, in a big city in Paris, in, um, in France, uh, you might be able to afford uh, two months in another country or more, so mm, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, anyway, so back to languages. Uh, the thing is, uh, like you said, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I just need to go to, to a country where you speak English, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to learn automatically. But that's just not how it works. Yeah. Uh, um, it's gonna work for some people, but usually those are people who had been who've been working on the English before right. going abroad. Yeah. So just saying, I'm gonna. It's, it's just a form of procrastination, mm -hmm. and it's just a bad excuse and it's a bad logic because if you don't speak English and you go to a new country, you're not gonna learn English magically. Right. Yeah. That. That's, uh, yeah. And I, and I think I think that's what um, a lot of people imagine that the fact that they're really like you know immersed. In it, yeah. that it, it's just gonna soak into their head by by magic, and I don't think that's that it. that, that yeah. doesn't happen because what well what what usually happens is that um, people go in an English speaking country, right? Uh, oftentimes they go to, they all go to the same places, uh, London and New York, right? Uh, Australia is pretty popular too, yeah. And they find out that they can't speak English, and that the uh, people's accent are too hard to understand, or whatever the problem is. Mm -hmm. And they feel frustrated, and then they spend all of the time with the other French expats. And so maybe they have fun for one year, but they, they go back to France and they feel frustrated because they didn't improve their English. Right, yeah. So m my advice to, to people would be uh, the whole immersion thing works, but you have to stick to it. So if you actually go to London or wherever you go, actually I would advise people not to go to London right. or New York, one of those popular places. What you want to go is go in the middle of nowhere where no one speaks French. <laughs> right. And then for sure, you know, I'm, I'm not even kidding about it because it's a systematic, it's a systemic approach. So you yeah. want to set up a system yeah. where you cannot fail. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, if you go in the middle, middle of nowhere, uh, you have to speak English. You and have you to. Make, yeah, you're going to 
get better, sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but my tip would be to prepare beforehand mm. so that when you go there, you enjoy yourself yeah. and you socialize and have fun mm -hmm. and find a good job instead of just being, you know, waiting for the right moment or from, you know, the language to, you know, magically download into your brain. Right, yeah. Which, uh, which I read an article the other day. They're actually working on that, uh -huh. like how to download information into yeah. your brain. But, just um, take a little pill and we'll see what comes uh, out. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not here yet. So right. And what about maybe just one, you know, just to finish off, maybe one big tip for someone who re just desperately wants to improve their pronunciation. What would that be? Uh, take a phonetics course because uh, you're gonna get, be able to discover like a new world of how the sounds mm. in English work. Right. And uh, from there, you're going to make a lot of progress because yeah. you're going to be able to observe how the language actually works instead mm -hmm. of imagining how to pronounce all the things. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you're going to be a, bit, a better observer and a better speaker mm. you know, down the line. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's yeah, just to take a, to find a course perhaps that's specially dedicated to phonetics and, and just focus on that for some time. To, and I, I think also when you, once you understand like the mechanics of phonetics and how it works it, it I mean afterwards you just have to be aware and to listen and to practice it and to try to adapt the way that you speak to actually do that and but first you have to to know what's happening yeah, I think you, it, it helps. yeah you, you know you need to know what you're looking for exactly right yeah okay right great okay well um Fabian it was a pleasure talking to you um just a reminder that your website it's bilanglais.com and people they can go there and they can they can sign up for a newsletter they can look at your books you've written like what Four books? I've written books. four books and a few other products, uh, trainings, uh, software. Mm, and, yeah, the click uh, and speak for the pronunciation yeah. also. Yeah, right, right. Okay, great, Fabian. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you. Likewise, Christina. All thanks right, a lot. thanks. Bye. Thanks, bye. And so that's it. I hope that you really enjoyed our, our interview. And I hope especially that you learned some tips on on how to improve your pronunciation. I hope you feel that yes, it is something that you can do. Um, and also that you feel that you don't have to have a special talent or a special gift for languages. It, it's something that anyone can learn, uh, especially you guys, because you have uh, some great resources to help you to learn English. And so I hope that you come away from this interview feeling just really inspired to continue working and to reach your goals. And if you want to learn more about Fabian and about his work, the link is in the notes below this video. So you can check that out. You can go see what he's doing. And uh, just most importantly, I hope that you, you really learned something and that you feel that, yes, you too can, can do this. It's, it's anybody can do it. Um, you just need the right tools, the right attitude, and uh, a little bit of organization that helps also. Okay, guys, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.